discussing the name Bhakta Vatsala. Vatsala, in, in general, he's very kind to everyone, and Bhakta Vatsala, he's especially kind to his devotees. I'm going to read a little bit and paraphrase a little bit from Hari Bhakti Kalpalatika, a very beautiful work on pure devotion by an unknown author in which he gives encouragement to the readers who may think that, well, yes, Krishna, he's very kind, he has very big devotees, like he, the author particularly mentions Lord Shiva, Narad Muni, and we can mention so many others, so many others. We know the names of Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda Mai, Radharani, Lalita, Vishaka, Sudam, Sridam, Dam, Vrishab, so many inhabitants of Vrindavan. We know the names of so many great devotees. We may not know the names of so many devotees who are very dear to Krishna. We own, we, I just said a few names of the Vrindavan devotees of Krishna. There are many, many more listed in Srila Rupa Goswami's Radha, Krishna, Ganodesha, Deepika. And those, those are only the most prominent, but there are many, many names which are not very well known, just like Lalita, Vishaka, Chitra, Ranga Devi, the, the principal gopis are well known. But there's so many others who are not very well known. And we may think, well, who am I? <laughs> we, we, we should think like that. Who am I but a small, I'm just like a small and misbehaved child in their midst. It's just, just like if you, if you go in the uh, parliament, in the, here in India we have the Lok Sabha, all big, big personalities and some, some no, somehow or other some naughty little child might enter and make a little disturbance. So it's a naughty little child, but you don't take anything they do or say seriously among so many eminent people. But the author of Hari Bhakti Kalpalatika says, don't become discouraged. Don't give up service to Mukunda. Mukunda, one meaning is Muktidata, who gives liberation. And for when Lord v Mukunda gives liberation, well, he gives liberation even to those who want to merge into his impersonal effulgence of his body. But he wants to give the kind of liberation which is suitable for serving him. He wants to help us. We are not fixed in his pure devotional service because <clears throat> we have so many anartas, so many attachments to this material world. But he is Mukunda. Don't think, the author says, don't think that devotional service is something that you cannot do. Who's doing it? The, the, the Shiva, Brahma, Narada, Garuda, Vishvaksena, uh, don't think that Krishna has so many <laughs> real devotees. And who am I? I'm, I'm trying to chant my rounds and falling asleep and thinking of everything except Krishna. Don't think we can't do it. He's the supreme controller of everything. He is difficult to approach. He makes approach to him easy by his holy names, but he's not cheap. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's not that we can just somersault into the, the Vrindavan pastimes. It's not easy to enter. <clears throat> but despite all this, we should know, he is an ocean of mercy. He Krishna, Karuna Sindhu, Dinabandhu, Jagatpati. Yes, he's Jagatpati, the Lord of the Universe but he's also an ocean of mercy and especially kind to the very fallen 
and is the dear friend of the devotees. And Krishna, in his kindness, accepts even... Yeah, I, I, if we speak objectively, and it doesn't seem to make any sense, but Krishna doesn't have to make sense to us. Even a, even someone like myself, he can he can accept as a devotee. If Srila Prabhupada says to him, "You please accept," yeah, Krishna will accept. Krishna becomes controlled by devotion and shows mercy. Aham bhakta parad he no, he says, tells Durvasa Muni that I am aham bhakta parad he no, nahiya svatantra ivadvija. I am subordinate to my devotees and I'm not independent. Don't believe all that stuff Vyasa Dev told you in the first verse of Bhagavatam. That's only when that's only in relation to non devotee. That's in relation to the universe. I'm independent. That's in relation to his knowledge, to his majesty, to his power. He's independent. But in relation to his devotees, Nahyaswatantra. I'm definitely not independent. Uh, even his beauty, his sweetness, when we get to these qualities, which are not, they're not, they're there in his magnificent manifestation as Narayana. But the, the Madhurya, the sweetest manifestation of Krishna is in Vrindavan. And his beauty, his sweetness, his love, which is so much manifested in Vrindavan, that's also, he's not independent. He's, uh, it's a reciprocation with his devotees. Why is Krishna so beautiful? Why? Because he's associated with Radha. That's all. He's not, not independent. He may be independent of you and me, but he's not independent of Radha. That is a transcendental factor. But still, he shows mercy to even someone who's just trying to be a devotee. If they go through the parampara system, take shelter. Ashraya loya bhaje tare krishna nahitaje arshab mare akaron. One who takes shelter of Krishna by the parampara system. Krishna never reject such a person. Everyone else is living uselessly. So, it doesn't matter. Even if someone is born in a most unlikely background, like myself and like so many others, Srila Prabhupada picked up. Doesn't matter. He's the greatest of the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. He is the one. Dhyana vastata tadgatena manaso pasyanti yams yoginaha. The yogis, they, they want to see him deep in their meditation. Deep, deep in meditation. The yogis try to search after him. He is the one who is Vedeshu Durlabham. All the Vedas point to him. Sarve Vedam Tatpadama Mananti. All the Vedas point to him. But still, Vedeshu Durlabham. It's very hard to find simply by studying the Vedas, by performing yoga, by performing austerities, uh, huge sacrifices, fruit activities, piety, giving in charity. He is attained only by devotional service. And uh, the author of Hari Bhakti Kalpalatika gives the example of Dhruva Maharaj. He had never studied any Vedas or Agamas. Uh, he had never performed any materially pious actions. He was too young to do that. And he approached Krishna even initially 
with some material motive. But still, by engaging in the devotional service of Krishna, under the direction of Narada, Narada gave the seed of pure devotion. By Narada's good wishes, although Dhruva had no interest in pure devotion, he, wa he wanted vengeance, actually. Uh, he didn't want to hurt his father, but he wanted to he wanted to show his own prowess. But Narad Muni, that, that is Bhakta Vatsala or, or Vatsala. Krishna is kind to the whole world by sending his pure devotees into the world to give pure devotional service to Krishna. So Dhruva Maharaj is an example. Uh, the author here gives example. If a father sees his son, little child, eating dirt, which sometimes children do, the, he, he takes the dirt, knocks the dirt out of the child's hand, and before the child has a chance to uh, burst into tears, he'll give him some nice sweet. We know from the childhood pastimes of Nimai, how Sachi Mata found her child eating dirt, and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke Mayavad philosophy. What? No, what? I, I, she said, I've got so many nice sweets to give you, sandesh. And, and the little boy said, well, it's all the same, earth and uh, sandesh. It's, sandesh is just a transformation of earth. And then, then uh, Shachi Mata explained, don't talk Mayavad. You're, you're supposed to, you, you came, you appeared in the world to knock out all this Mayavad. She didn't say that. But uh, she said, yeah, it's true that Sandesh is transmission of earth, but it, it's not all the same. Sandesh will nourish you, and eating earth will make you sick. And then Nimai, never one to be defeated in an argument, even at a young age, said, okay, but I'm still not gonna, I'm still not gonna accept defeat. When I'm hungry, I'll suck your breast. He told so it was a good finish to both for both of them. They're both happy with that exchange. So Krishna, in the same way, like like a, an affectionate father knocks the knocks the dirt out of the hand and puts a, a nice sweet in the mouth. Uh, so in the same way, Krishna knocks out the material desires from the hearts of those who worship him with material motives, being unaware of their true spiritual nature. Narad Muni didn't instruct Dhruva in, in his true spiritual nature because Dhruva said, look, I'm, uh, I'm not interested. I, uh, you don't tell me about all this stuff. <laughs> he was pretty, I mean, he was only a child, but he was pretty, pretty headstrong. Krishna very kindly gives his delightful lotus feet what happens is, just like Krishna says in Gita, the, the chatur vidha bhajante mang jana sukriti no jana arto jignasu artarti jnani cha bharatar shabha. People approach me with all different motives for mitigation of distress. If they're pious, they approach me, Krishna says, to worship me. They, they For mitigation of distress, for gaining money, uh, out of some curiosity or because they actually know that Krishna should be worshipped. So different people were, But what happens is that when they come in contact with Krishna, Krishna is so attractive and the, the natural... When one comes in contact with Krishna, the natural attraction of the, of the soul awakens. A perverted reflection of that is the commonly done thing. When, when materialistic people want a saintly person to fall down, they send beautiful women. It's been going on since time immemorial. Not only in Vedic culture do we hear of such things, but in other cultures also. They send a, a beautiful woman with the idea that the, the attraction is there in the heart of every man for a beautiful woman 
And so surely if we send a beautiful woman who's expert at seduction, that person will fall down. Some in history, some fell down and some didn't. So those who are very strong in their spiritual practices didn't fall down. Others did fall down. But it works in the positive way also that the natural attraction in the heart when we come to Krishna awakens. Now that doesn't mean that we should preach to people that you do all materialistic things and chant Hare Krishna because we don't have to preach like that. We can tell them chant Hare If they're not ready to hear the message of pure devotion, we can tell them just chant Hare Krishna, come and take prasadam. But at some point we have to tell them, you actually try and understand what is our precarious position in this material world. We don't preach that it's okay to be materialistic and chant Hare Krishna. We shouldn't do, because what happens is then the pure teachings get lost and we think, well, it's all okay. And you do whatever you like and chant Hare Krishna, and that's the fall down of the Gauriya Sampradaya. We have to be very careful to keep the message pure, but at the same time, pure means straightforward message. But at the same time, straightforward message, Krishna is the Supreme Lord, we have to surrender to him. At the same time, we understand that if we somehow or other bring people into Krishna consciousness, yena tena prakarena mana krishna neveshet, Saravidhi nishedasya etayor eva kinkaraha. Somehow or other bring people to Krishna consciousness. Later on introduce all the rules and regulations. Later on introduce all the rules and regulations. So the point is that if people somehow or other come in contact with Krishna, then they'll be attracted by Krishna's natural attractiveness. But then we have to present the natural attractiveness of Krishna. The natural attractiveness of Krishna is that he is beyond all material attraction. If we're, if we're talking about, yes, you get a good university degree and chant Hare Krishna and have a lesbian marriage and chant Hare Krishna, then we're going to cover the attraction of Krishna, which is beyond all this nonsense. Okay. Uh, the author of the Hari Bhakti Kalpalatika says, if even misbehaved persons intent on their own happiness attain Lord Hari's lotus feet by occasionally worship him, worshipping him, who can, who can describe the good fortune of the saintly devotees who worship the Lord in pure love, even if served by those with personal motives in a troublesome and annoying way or with hypocrisy, the Lord liberates his devotees who is more merciful than he? This is pretty amazing. We don't encourage hypocritical devotion. In fact, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warned against it. Kutinati, duplicitous devotional service that will block the true path of devotion. But here the author of Hari Bhakti Kalpalatika says that even if one worships the Lord with hypocrisy, then the Lord will deliver them. Yeah, okay. But it may take a long time. Definitely. Uh, <clears throat> and it's, it, that spirit of selfishness and then one uh, cheats devotees and uh, he makes offenses. And still, somehow or other, he's connected with Krishna. So the good result will be there, but it may take some time. And in the meantime, the hypocrisy and devotional service is covering the actual path. And so it becomes a great disturbance in society when we don't present Krishna as he is and Krishna consciousness as it is. Shruti, Smriti, Purana, Adi, Pancharatra, Vidhin, Vina, Aikanta, Ki, Hare, Bhakti, Utpataya, Iva, Kalpate. Devotional service of the Lord that ignores the actual path outlined in all the scriptures, such devotional service, which is the only truly auspicious thing in human society, it becomes transformed into something which is actually a disturbance in human society because it covers the real path. So somehow or other, if someone's chanting, 
that's for their eternal benefit. But, but it's not that, that's the point that's being made here. But it's not that we should encourage or endorse or allow within the society of pure devotees hypocritical or in other ways duplicitous de devo so-called devotional service because that will make the path much more difficult for others. What to speak of the person himself who is doing devotion in such a crooked way. <clears throat> Then, the author says, if a person who has never attained any materially pious activities worships Lord Hari's lotus feet by offering some water and tulsi leaves, the Lord who is the friend of the devotees and unapproachable by the materially pious gives in return his own lotus feet. Somehow or other, generally, people are not pious, they don't take to devotional service. Yeshang tvantagatang pa pam jana nam punya karmanam Generally, people who engage in pious activities, when they get free from the all the bogus ideas of this material world, they can engage in my devotional service, Krishna says, with determination. So generally, impious people won't do things like offering water and tulsi to Krishna, but somehow, if one does so, then Krishna becomes obliged to that. But he feels he wants to deliver that person, whereas someone who engages only in materially pious activities remains unapproachable by Krishna. But even materially pious activities within the Vedic culture are very helpful in the sense that the Vedic culture is directly or indirectly all focused on Vishnu. That's why you'll find pious Hindus, they all keep Tulsi in their home. They may even think it's for some material benefit. It gives a lot of oxygen and so very good for health. Have a stomach problem or have a cold, you can use Tulsi. It's a very materialistic way of thinking. But somehow or other, if one worships Tulsi, then Tulasi Krishna Prayasi. Krishna is very fond of Tulsi and uh, that by serving Tulsi, one becomes benefited. The Smartas, they worship Shalagram, they worship Vishnu, they chant Vishnu Sahasranam, but they have the idea, well, it's one among many other pious activities. They don't recognize that we are eternal servants of Krishna. They take it as another pious activity, but somehow or other they're in contact with Vishnu. And we find that, that people from Hindu smarter backgrounds, although traditionally the smarter background has been considered the in opposition to pure devotional service, but such people are more likely to take to Krishna consciousness than people who are out of the Vedic culture altogether. That's why we find many Hindus who are not from a Vaishnava background take to this Krishna conscious movement, maybe because they recognize in the four regulated principles, yes, this is something very religious and very pious. It's something that, something that they feel attracted to. They, they can appreciate that. Um, and then when they hear the message of pure devotion, if it's spoken, it should be spoken in all, in all the outlets of ISKCON, then they can come to pure devotional service. Whereas people without that background, of course, many people without any background in Krishna consciousness whatsoever, again, I can give myself as an example, at least in this lifetime, I had no background, uh, they can take to Krishna consciousness also. Now, I'm going to read a section. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, I'll read it. Um, from Brihad Bhagavatamrita regarding the uh, deliverance of Gopakuma. Those of you who have read Brihad Bhagavatamrita, you'll understand 
We appreciate what a delightful, uplifting, enthusing, uh, mind attracting story is there, which Sanatana Goswami gives of Gopakuma, who was a cowherd boy born in Govardhan and who went through many adventures before he finally came to the lotus feet of Krishna in the spiritual world. Uh, this is reading from the second part of Brihad Bhagavatamrita. There are two main divisions. So second part, fourth chapter, from text 81 onwards, in which, which goes as follows, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Swagatam Swagatam Vatsa, Dishya Dishya Bhavan Maya, Sangato Tra Tvad Ikshayam, Chiram Utkantitenahi. You may have noticed the word Vatsa. The word Vatsa is there, which means my, my dear darling, who I'm most affectionate to, Kotobotsurati, in, in Bengali, they'll say up to the present. How many children do you have? Kotobotsurati, is Bengali pronunciation of Vatsa. So the idea, child, is someone, a child is someone who's, it, the, the, the parents are very affectionate to. So this is, and even uh, at least in Bengali culture, you can refer to someone younger than you can refer to them as bacha, like that, uh, someone who's, who you are affectionate to. You may say well, even when chastising them, just to let them know that you love them, but they need a little chastisement. So I'm, I, because vatsa that the child who is seen like an, an affectionate parent to a child. Uh, so from that we have the word, it's connected, bhakta vatsala, vatsalya, the mood of pariposhan, lalan palan, maintaining, upbringing, protecting, <clears throat> nourishing, this is what is done toward a vatsa, which literally means a calf, as a cow to a calf. So translation of this verse. The Supreme Lord said, Welcome, welcome, my dear boy. Vatsa is translated as my dear boy. I'm, I am fortunate, most fortunate to meet you here. For so long I have been eager to see you. And we may think, well, I'll be so fortunate to go to Krishna. But he is thinking, Ah, I'm, I am. I am fortunate to see you in the commentary, from the commentary. Hoping to calm Gopakuma, the most compassionate Lord, because Gopakuma is in overwhelming bliss. The, the most compassionate Lord greeted him as a welcome guest. The Lord stated honestly that he had been waiting a long time for Gopakuma to come to Vaikuntha. Then, <clears throat> continuing the verse, My dear friend, you have passed many lifetimes without paying any attention to me at all. For so long, hope had me dancing like a fool, thinking perhaps in this lifetime, or this, or this, or this, he will finally turn his face toward me. So this is Krishna's vatsalya. This is not toward a devotee in particular, but just he's seeing the live, one living being, and I, I'm maybe he'll come to me. Maybe he'll come to me. No, no, no. He's he's just away from me. Commentary. Even though Gopakumar had forgotten his Lord for many lifetimes, the Lord had never forgotten him. The Lord wanted Gopakumar to know this and also to know how eager the Lord had always been to regain the association of his devotee. We say God is merciful. We have no idea. We think if we get a rise in our peg, a pious person will think, oh, God is being merciful to me. We have no idea how merciful, how affectionate he is toward us. So on next verse, 
I could find no pretext on which to bring you to my abode, dear brother, and still follow the timeless laws that I myself have created. Please listen very carefully to the commentary. Since the Supreme Lord is all-powerful, why didn't he simply find a way to bring Gopakumar to him sooner? Then the reason is given. The Lord establishes the laws of the universe which are enunciated in the Vedas and other scriptures, and he chooses to adhere to his own restrictions. As long as living entities want to control and enjoy their own world, he does not interfere. Only when they show by calling out his names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. That by calling out his name, only when they show by calling out his names that they want to return to him, does he again reveal himself. In previous lives, Gopakumar had never chanted the names of Lord Narayana, even unintentionally or in jest. Had he at least vibrated a shadow of the Lord's name, he could have been delivered like a Jamil. In any case, now Gopakumar is finally returning home. Next verse. You, Bhagavan, speaking to Gopakumar, you showed me no mercy, and as I considered this, I grew impatient, full of anxiety to receive your favor. To receive your favor. He's saying, to someone who is not a devotee. So I transgressed my eternal code of conduct and arranged for you to take your current birth. Dear boy, in that divine district of Govardhan, my most beloved abode, I myself became your guru, known by the name Jayanta. Commentary. The Lord does not interfere with the independence of the rebellious jivas. He mostly leaves the responsibility for reforming them to the Vedas and Vaishnavas. But ultimately it is his mercy that saves the conditioned souls. The Supreme Lord interferes with Gopakumar's karma by making Gopakumara take birth at Govardhan Hill. Translation Today you have at last fulfilled the desire I have harbored for so long. Please Nourish your happiness and mine by staying here forever. Commentary. Here the Lord says in all humility, What good have I ever done for you? But you have done the greatest good for me by coming here. This is Vatsala. He's so kind. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it cheaply. But remember, we have a very, very kind Lord. So, having said that, I'll finish this uh, speaking on Vishnu Sahasranam. Today, 